Hello, it's Emma Lisa Christensen and um, from East Sussex, and this is my mother's voice. And I have a, a stack of um, poetry that I wrote years ago, sitting in front of me, and um, not sure how much of it I should read just now because I, I I don't want to be obsessive about this, but I'm quite enjoying it, and it's poetry I haven't actually read for years, so it's been stuck stuck in my drawer, and. Um, I've just got it out, and um, it's not as bad as I thought it was. <laughs> it doesn't mean everyone will agree with me, but uh, I, I don't remember it um, being like that. I'd quite like to get to a book or something, but I don't, I'm not quite sure what book to read yet. Um, so I, I think I'll just keep on practicing a little bit more on my reading skills, because um, they are a little bit rusty. And um, I shall try reading another uh, poem. This one, this one was about. Uh, um, I was doing a, a book um, about monsters, uh, uh, monsters A to Z. This was when my kids were much younger, and uh, I was writing poems for them to read to them um, when they went to bed. And um, some of them were not really the sort of thing that they quite got. Other ones were really, you know, a lot more adventure and um, fast moving. This one was a bit different, so I actually took it out of my Monsters for Bed because it didn't quite fit in with all the other monsters. Um, this was about a monster who didn't realise they were a monster. They, they were um, innocent. And um, you can be a monster and still be innocent, I know. But um, this one just didn't quite fit in. All the other monsters were pretty icky and yucky, but this one... Uh, it didn't kind of fit with the rest of them, so so it's kind of sitting outside the the rest of the folder. Um, it's called Monsters for Bed, A to Z, A to Z Monsters for Bed. That uh, the book and I, I sent it off and one time, uh, one time and uh, it came back and um, I I never sent it off again. So it's just been stuck there. So I, I might read a few of them if I, I dig them out later. Um, at the moment I'm, I'm looking at the ones that are sitting on top of the, the file and let's get to it because I'm gabbing. Okay, this one is called Hand of Ice and um, I think it's kind of like self-explanatory what it's about. Um, but maybe not. Maybe it's just because I know what it's about. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, it's called Hand of Ice. Innocent Eyes open slowly under the dark roof of the cave where pre-dawn moonlight filtered in and silhouetted the tree. The child arose to look around, feeling neither fearful nor brave. Without any notion of sin, he stepped gingerly to the ground. The frozen footprints in his wake sparkled brightly under the stars. He touched the branches tenderly, but they were so easy to break. Looking up and chuckling with mirth, he trampled on bushes like grass and blew a cloud caressingly so the icy tears fell to earth. Fascinated, he watched the stream stop suddenly as he leant down. Both fish and weeds were caught in time, like a photograph it would seem. The puzzled child moved to explore on his face a bewildered frown. He'd no sus suspicion of his crime, nor that he could do so much more. Golden light touched the eastern sky. Its war rays warmed the ground as he cr they crept. The child's finger traced the sunbeam curiously. He let out a cry. As the finger touched the flame, the sun turned to ice, the land returned to darkness. He knew not what he'd done. The grass died, the trees wept, and billions of little lights unseen were snuffed out one by one. So, um, yeah, it, it was a, an innocent child who didn't know what he did, so, um, but he still did something monstrous. I guess there's a little bit of that in everybody that um, we kind of do things unwittingly and we hurt people or like the human race wrecking the, the world um, before we realise that actually we were wrecking the world, we were doing it, you know, without thinking, without realising. Um, but once we realised, we should have done something about it. Anyway, enough of that. 
and um, see you next time.